And so I would set the recorder. I would ignore it. I'd check the score. If they won, yay. If they didn't win, I'd erase it. <laughs> and when I watched the game, I was calm. I didn't get upset. And no matter what happened, I knew they were going to win. The other team could 50 points ahead. No problem. <laughs> I don't know when we're going to do it. I don't know how we're going to do it. I just know it's going to happen. Why should I get upset? <laughs> Much better way to watch the game. When they're making a big comeback, you're going, yeah, yeah. 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 Imagine, too, if you apply, apply that to all your relationships, <laughs> where you knew they're all destined for holiness. And so they could get drunk, they could scream at you, they could, you know, pass out, they could go to the emergency room in the hospital with glass cutting their face and like this. And you just like, mm, destined for holiness. <laughs> Thank God. This is all destined for holiness. And that's really the convincing job that the Holy Spirit does with us. When you work with a tool like A Course in Miracles, or there's many, many great tools. Of course, it's just one of the many great tools on the planet. But when you pick your path, or, or your path reveals itself to you, and you go for it, then you start to gain a real confidence with miracles. That's why it's not called a course in revelation, because that's, oh, that's, that's great, all blazing light and the whole world disappears. Nah, maybe not quite yet. Oh, a course in miracles. Oh, yeah, miracles, I like that. They, they prepare the way for these huge mystical experiences that are coming. And, and actually, that's exactly that. I love that metaphor. It's the first time I've heard that DVR <laughs> metaphor. But that's experientially how it feels for me. Yeah. I mean, oh, the script is written. Can you just expand on that? Because that, to me, brings me more comfort than anything else in that blue book. That it's done and all. It's just how you look at it. You don't have to figure out what to do, where to go, anything. You just go and depend on the right teacher to listen to. And so just yeah. expand on that, that's all. Yeah. Yes, for some of you who aren't aware of that, there's a, a line in the workbook of A Course in Miracles where Jesus says the script is written. It's, it's a sentence. The script is written, period. And people have all kinds of reactions to that, that idea because it seems to have a sense of destiny. And most of us can all agree, I think, on a spiritual journey that we have a destiny to wake up to heaven or wake up to know our true reality. Uh, that's like a larger destiny, that, that God created us perfect and innocent and try as we may in time and space to avoid it. We really can't. It's actually inevitable that we're going to wake up. Uh, so in one sense, that's good. That's a good kind of destiny feeling. Now the script is written, starts to take that destiny idea and starts to apply it even to form. Because uh, I was just giving a talk in Atlanta, and I was, and I think John has heard that one too, where, you know, it, you know, we've heard that God created us with free will. But it tend, we tend to take that as God created us with choice. God gave us choice. And actually free will is, we have free will in heaven. And our free will is God's will, is, which is for perfect happiness. So, really, that's what free will is. It's not really choice, it's perfect happiness. That we, we were created with free will because we were created in a state of perfect happiness. And that's the only way we can know ourselves truly, is in that state of perfect happiness. The other stuff that's of this world is just temporary, kind of working things out. Now, we don't have free will in this world, and we could say that the only reverberation or the only reflection of free will that's left in the sleeping, dreaming world of fragmentation and separation is choice. So the Course says that he that has a workbook, heaven is a choice that I must make. We need to learn how to choose the Holy Spirit, how to choose the correction or the atonement, and even though heaven is not really a choice, it has to take the form of a choice in this world. The choice that we have is really, like John was saying, is the choice on how we look upon the world, either with the ego or the Holy Spirit. It's a choice of purpose. It's like a choice of, of, of fear and guilt 
and shame and pain or a choice of love and peace and harmony. It's almost like the lens that we look through is really the choice that we need to learn how to make. Because while we keep thinking we can make choices in form, and we do have lots to make on a practical basis every day, we really need to learn to tune into guidance and answer that prayer, you know, have that prayer be, Holy Spirit, decide for God for me. I want to join with the Holy Spirit in decisions, not try to make autonomous ego decisions, which always end in frustration. So, when we say the script is written, the most, when I asked Jesus about the script is written, I said, what, tell me about this, the script is written. He said, well, the, the first thing he said was, the emphasis is on the last word, written, uh, saying the script is the past. So, when you're looking at the script of your life, you're looking at the past. Whenever you feel lonely, hurt, upset, afraid, whatever, you're identified with the story and not your Christ reality. You're, you're identified with the doer and not the being that you are. And you need to learn to see the falsity of the story and accept the divinity of your eternal reality, which is the gateway is through the present moment. So, that I would say, the script is written as a metaphor, as if there really is a script. Now, when you go deeper into the Course, you go deeper into the Holy Instance, you actually start to have some mystical experiences to show you that time isn't really linear at all. So, even the script is written is just a metaphor for the mind that believes in linear time. Saying, mm, don't get too worked up about the stories in the script because it's written and you're really getting all bent out of shape over the past. <laughs> and you're still trying to live as if the past is present. And it's over and gone. But we're going to have to convince you that it's over and gone. Because you still believe that it's still going on. And you don't see that everything's already been answered. The Holy Spirit answered the problem of separation, the tiny man idea, the instant that it seemed to arise. So, you know, nothing's a big deal to the Holy Spirit. It's like the Holy Spirit it's corrected. It's, it's already solved. You don't have to try to solve or solve a deep mystery or uh, try to figure out this unfathomable idea of separation. You just have to accept the correction. But practically speaking, that means we have to tune in to guidance. While we still believe in linear time, we, guidance is still meaningful. Do I go here? Do I go there? Do I do this? Do I do that? Those decisions, as long as you still have this attachment to the past, then those are very, very practical decisions that can't be glossed over. So, on the one hand, we don't want to use the script is written as kind of some kind of blanket affirmation. You know, if somebody tells you your mother has cancer, you know, you don't have to say, well, yeah, the script is written. Uh, you know, something like that. Especially if you've got some emotions coming up where you have a sense of loss or a sense of grief or a sense of sadness or whatever. That has to be dealt with. That has to be handled. And it's handled through the same process of forgiveness that we're learning. But you're talking about in the ultimate sense that you really can't change the world. Jesus says you have no control over the world you made. And to me that goes right back to the serenity prayer, you know, where anyone who's gone through the 12 steps knows that you have to surrender the belief that your life is manageable. You have to open up to the higher power. You've got to do your inventories, which is really bring up the darkness we were talking about earlier. And you have to make contact with the higher power and let the higher power tell you how beautiful and innocent you are and you always have been. And then the last of the 12 steps is continuing contact with the higher power, continued guidance, until you reach what I call the 13th step, <laughs> which is really what Jesus did. He just he accepted the atonement. He, he reached a point where he said, okay, this is over and done now. And he found the divine innocence, the I am presence. And he was a way shower for all of us. He was just leading the way and saying, follow me. 
I found the way, I found the escape from guilt, and, and now I want you all to join me in this happiness and love and peace and joy. That was really the message.